By the early 1960s, thousands of teenage baby boomers, driver's licenses in hand, were eager to cruise America's streets and highways. It was just a real neat time to be in. Uh, uh, I participated uh, in the cruise scene, uh, as a lot of young people did. Uh, I wasn't necessarily driving the kinds of cars that I admired so much in those years, but uh, we always were down there looking for them and enjoying them, and uh, always wanted to hear what those big engines sounded like. But the family car just wouldn't do. Something new was needed to meet young America's passion for power. Eager to capitalize on this phenomenon, American automakers began turning out the legendary muscle cars of the 60s, stylish new coupes and convertibles packed with horsepower. Chrysler already had an edge with its famous 300. Chrysler started at a little higher plane in the, in the early mid 50s with a 300, but that was sort of a rich man's toy. The average young person couldn't afford that. The highest production of 300s was 1957 with about 2200 plus cars and the lowest production was in 1963, around 400 to 600 cars. So it was a rich man's toy, and the car behind me, that's why it's a huge looking car, you only sit four people and it has bucket seats in the front, has bucket seats in the back. So it was more of a toy. But the engines they developed, the 300s, are the ones that it ended up in the light body Furies and Plymouth and, and so forth. The 60s saw the birth or recreation of many high-powered engines, including the much acclaimed Chrysler Hemi, to meet the growing demand for speed. For Chrysler, uh, during that period of time, the, uh, the 426 engine, uh, which originally was a wedge head engine, was uh, the biggest engine. Um, and then later on, that grew to a 440 cubic inch engine by 66, 67 in there. But in the meantime, the 426 was um, redesigned into a Hemi configuration and uh, brought out for race purposes only in 1964. Styling also took its cue from the new emphasis on high performance. At Chrysler, a crisp, clean new look emerged under the guidance of chief designer Elwood Engel. Uh, he was uh, the styling whiz and he liked to make things go. And he liked, you know, a slick image to go with all the power and all the responsiveness that we were putting in vehicles. And he was primarily the, the individual that, that gave us a good styling a theme that we followed. And, and it was all kind of performance related. Cars had to look fast because they were fast. Anxious to further enhance the image of their high performance cars, Ford, GM and Chrysler flexed their muscle cars on racetracks across the nation. We were king of the road during the 60s. The Chrysler Hemi engine just dominated both drag racing and grand national racing. In fact, it was so good that uh, some of the sanctioning bodies put restrictions to kind of tune it down, but we still wound up winning our share of events. Muscle cars continued to increase in popularity throughout the 60s. Gas was still cheap. Life was good in the fast lane. Chrysler continued turning out popular new models like the Dodge Charger, the Dodge Super V, and a restyled Plymouth Barracuda to go head-to-head -head with the Chevy Camaro, the Ford Mustang, and the Pontiac Firebird. But one of the best-remembered symbols of Chrysler's muscle car era almost didn't make it off the drawing board. The 68 Roadrunner started as, a, as sort of a whimsical kind of thing. It started with about a projection of 5,000 units. And the most controversial issue was the little bird. Uh, and the design office says, we don't want any little birds sitting in our car. That'll be the last thing over my dead body. So the first initial cars we shipped, we put the bird inside the glove box, and if you wanted to put the bird on, you could. Well, you know, it was history after that. It was, we sold probably 30, 35,000 the first year and about 45,000 the second year. Baby boomers continued their love affair with muscle cars until the oil crisis of the early 1970s, and the industry appealed to the passion of the age. The Dodge Rebellion wants you! But then the freedom of the 60s was tempered by a series of events that pulled the plug on the era of high horsepower and high performance. Chrysler in the 1970s, coming soon on CEN. <laughs>